One of Chit Chat's first key main projects, led by me with a team of lawyers, historians and other interdisciplinary scholars, explores the history of everyday offending in Plymouth. These are the incidents of petty crime, which are dealt with by police and magistrates and which never go to the higher courts, but which, at over 90% of all crimes over the last 150 years, have a huge everyday impact on people's daily lives, shaping who they are and how communities see themselves. What we are investigating is the occurrence, policing and prosecution of minor crime between 1880 and 1920. The results of this research will then be used to compare modern day responses to low level offending in the city between 1980 and 2020. As a maritime city, Plymouth has a unique heritage. Until 1914, it was three separate towns, Plymouth, East Stonehouse, and the oldest of the three, Devonport, formerly known as Plymouth Dock. By 1850, each town had its own separate police force and magistrates court, together with two combined prisons, Plymouth Borough Prison at Greenbank and Devonport and Stonehouse Prison at Pennycombe Quick. Unusually, Plymouth was never an assize town, so serious crime trials were heard at Exeter or Bodmin, never locally, and that forms a very important part of the crime-related heritage for individuals here. Currently, using lo local newspaper reports and material from the South West Police Heritage Trust archive, the research is exploring the shifts and patterns in the incidence of everyday offending during this period, including drunkenness, domestic violence, petty thieving, prostitution, etc. We ask how the three towns dealt with such offences and, using the memories included in these records, we discover how people sought to make their communities safe. The police were key to the effectiveness of dealing with such offending, along with other prominent individuals involved in the management of such petty crime, especially the local justices of the peace and chief constables of the respective forces. One in particular, who I have been looking at, is Chief Constable Joseph Sowerby, appointed to the Plymouth City Police in 1893. He turned out to be just the kind of man the police Plymouth Borough Council were looking for to combat Plymouth's heritage of disorderliness and drunkenness. Sowerby, who was a strong temperance supporter and had a clear moral agenda, took a keen lead in cleaning up the town, especially the notorious area around Union Street. He ensured that the 300 plus public houses, beer houses and off-licences were properly managed and run to curtail drunkenness and its associated violence. He also prosecuted anyone found swearing or drunk and disorderly and attempted to pro prohibit betting, game gambling and even unsuccessfully local whist drives. The idea is to use a prosopographical or group biography approach to exploring Plymouth's crime heritage to reveal its modern relevance in a way that makes it both manageable and accessible, telling the stories of types of victims, perpetrators and the police helping to manage Plymouth's criminal past.